Hey people, it's Larry again, or maybe I should say Larry Athey, PhD. Not that I'm a doctor of philosophy or anything, it's, I found out I have to set some fence posts this weekend, so that's PhD as in post hole digger. So, sounds kind of nice. At any rate, this weekend I figured I would do a video showing the solids lifting overflow and skimmer that I put together here. Sorry about the water clouding up. I had a drastic fall in pH and I had to buffer it back up uh, using the pH up kit from the aquaponic source. I highly recommend anybody who's looking for um, aquaponic supplements, equipment, you name it, go to uh, the aquaponic source or look up Sylvia Bernstein on YouTube. Uh, this lady really knows what she's doing and she knows how to explain things in human terms without scaring the crap out of you with a bunch of overly unnecessary scientific garbage. And she's just a great person all the way around to work with. So uh, look her up and if you need stuff, I recommend getting it from her. But back to my overflow and skimmer here. The water's clouded up because of the uh, calcium carbonate in there. And my camera sucks, so it goes out of focus all the time. But I'll pull it out of the tank so you can actually see what's going on. If you look at this spill tube, this pipe that comes from my fish tank, you see how fast the water's coming out of there? That's coming out between 5 and 6 gallons a minute. A little over 300 gallons per hour and this is 100% dependent upon this little elbow at the top of my standpipe that goes back down into the water now if you see you can see here my water level in my tank is actually over top of that horizontal piece so my overflow is actually constantly 100% underwater If you were to rely on gravity by itself on a one inch pipe like this, you would never be able to get 300 gallons per hour out of it. I'll take this top piece off just to show you how quickly this changes. See how quickly that changed? That easily cut in half, if not a little more. I'll put it back on over here. There the elbow is back on. And this will take a little while, a minute or so, to uh, capture its suction power again. And it's actually starting to pick up right now. And there it goes. I'm going to shut off the water to my tank and pull that standpipe out. Oops. I'll show you what's going on. Yep, there goes the suction again. So that's how quickly that makes a difference. I'll try to go as quick as I can here so this video doesn't stretch out forever. There we go. Just like any other solids lifting overflow that you'll see, um, you cut notches in the bottom of your pipe so when it sits all the way down on the bottom of your tank, water has a way to get in. So these little notches cut in here, I just did that with a bench grinder and chopped them in there. Now, when you look at anybody else's standpipe, they don't include this top part here. That's it. That's all they have. And they say the reason to leave this open is so that you don't create a siphon and accidentally um, drain your tank. They just expect gravity. Well, when you do that, you have to use a much larger diameter pipe. Much larger. Uh, 
if I wanted 300 gallons per hour out of this tank using a larger diameter pipe, I would probably have to go up to pretty close to three inches. And I didn't want that. That's, that's huge. Um, it's just a big, ugly mess. So what I did here, this is one inch Schedule 40 PVC. I have this flexible part here because uh, my pipe kind of comes in at the top of the IBC tank at an angle. Come on, camera focus. So you can see as it goes down and comes up the side of the pipe, it, it or the tank, it it, um, it comes in at an angle. So that's why this part is on here with the stainless steel hose clamps. But instead of just leaving this T wide open on the top, I reduced its diameter by adding another piece of uh, one inch PVC inside of it and then I made this out of two half inch pieces or elbows half inch PVC elbows and I had to file it down a little so it would fit in there and the whole object here is to reduce the inside diameter of this top part to create a rapid amount of suction and as you can see we we'll try to line that up. This elbow is actually perfectly even with this. I added another half inch piece of PVC in the end there to push the very end of my opening down into the water. And when you have that, your water comes up here, goes over the top. Air will still kind of get in there you know, without this, and you won't create a whole lot of suction. However, you go this route, reducing this inside diameter and putting it right back down in the water, it creates a siphon that automatically breaks itself. So as your water comes up to this height, your siphon begins and your water level goes back down until it breaks the siphon, but it only breaks for just a split second. And it constantly does this over and over. These are really easy to make. And I don't know how I came up with this idea. Um, I've seen some other types of overflows on systems that I guess people call them a J-tube or something like that. And they kind of worked, but they didn't quite create the suction that this does. I think maybe it's because they were using smaller diameter pipe. But I think that's about all I have for this. I tried to explain this to JT Bear last week in comments. I don't know if I did that good of a job, but I figure if I pull it out of the tank and actually show it like this 100%, um, people will get a better idea Maybe my Canadian friend up there uh, will give this a whirl in his uh, Frankenponics system. <laughs> JT, you cracked me up, man. At any rate, that's all I got. Take it easy, and we'll see you next week. Bye.